put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. If the video is too long for you, I have recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. Chappy Moon Review As humanoid robots are dispatched as cops, the they start to replace the human police force. And the mullet that is Hugh Jackman, who's kind of like a Bible thumper in this, yeah, it's it's interesting. He is this ex-soldier, and he says that, you know, we should only have human police. AI is just too unpredictable, and he's made this kind of mech battle suit that he calls the Moose. They're the scouts, I think. And it's remote controlled by a person, so yeah. Now, one of these robots are reprogrammed to have consciousness, and hence we have Chap. He's very childlike and innocent, and I don't think I should really give too much more away about the plot. Stuff happens, and Chappy is important. Now, the. I suppose that. Starting with the obvious, Brad Jones and his friends have already pointed this out. This is essentially a gritty remake of Short Circuit. It's. Yeah. This, this is Johnny Five being, you know, chased down by the ED-209. Yeah. Now... <sighs> Ranking this with, with Neil, Blomkamp, blah, Neil Blomkamp's other movies, District 9 is still easily the best one. Elysium is still pretty mixed. This one also mixed. I, there are definitely some aspects that are better than Elysium and overall it's not as mainstream as Elysium is in, in the sort of setup. It's yeah and certainly the action yeah a lot better now, it is worth noting that Neil Blomkamp has yet to make a feature movie that does not have robots and or mechs. So, yeah, he's... There's there's a bit of a... It's, it's one of his numerous tropes. I tried to note them. You know, rewatching District 9, thinking back on... Elysium and such. Now, Chappie himself is entirely motion captured and voiced by Shalto Copley, who again shows th the man can act. He he does such distinct characters that yeah, and it's really well integrated CG as usual for Neil Blomkamp. Now and as usual for Neil Blomkamp, we have these video game-like situations, but the movie kind of gets there logically. It's not like, you know, a lot of mainstream action movies get, you know, go with the video game-like situation, and it's just there because it, you know, it's cool. But, yeah, in, in these, Neil Blomkamp puts effort into making them, yeah, you, you get there logically. Now, this one does not have as many cool guns as the... Yeah, I... I most of the time it is just, you know, regular guns, bullets. Although the mech does have some other... Yeah. 
Now, it's it's quite funny. The you know it has the the black comedy again as with other as with the other Blomkamp films and you know these very sudden like bursts of of comedy now part of what makes this movie interesting is that you know robots being part of our daily lives is very close to us and you know it yeah won't be too long before that is reality and this movie, like many before it, go and kind of explore what that might be like. Now, now, the as usual, we have a you know, someone who's really mistreated and, you know, in in this it's mostly chappy who gets really, yeah, and it's basically, he is very childlike and we only follow him for a few days and over those days he, you know, he reacts very much like a child to a lot of different things like some people might you know tell him he has to be a certain way other people might say otherwise and yeah it's 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 well done and you know the you know while he is basically good-natured you do also not want to you know you don't really want to mess with him because you know, smile and and soft voice and childlike, you know, d demeanor. Notwithstanding, he can you know, at one point, he kicks through like several feet of like bricks in you know building wall, just like that. So yeah, that is a a very real. Yeah. Now, the the action is very intense. Now, one major issue with this one is the characters. Basically, Hugh Jackman is fun. Hugh Jackman is a lot of fun. He's he's the big villain of this and as with the two movies before, Neil Blomkamp makes some really really fun villains and yeah, and and Jackman is game like he is the the typical, you know, you know, muscly, you know, but here he's kind of, he's threatening towards, you know, so it's, it, it works really well. You, you know, you're, you're scared of what he'll do rather than cheering him on. So, yeah. Everyone else. The names are pretty much wasted. Like, Sigourney Weaver did not really need to be in this movie. Her role... Yeah, it... Yeah, it didn't really call for much, and there's very little screen time. And, you know, the, the Slumdog Millionaire, he's good, but he... Excuse me, again, he doesn't get a lot to do, really. It's... Some of these characters kind of exist just so that certain situations can come to be. The, you know, Sigourney Weaver is basically the boss of both Dev Patel, I think his name is, and Hugh Jackman's mullet. And 
Jackman wants to use the moose. Patel wants to reprogram one with consciousness. And we Weaver kind of says no to both. It you know. And then there's at least one more decision that Weaver has to make over the course of the film, and that's basically it. There just needed to be a boss character there that could take these things out. And once Dev has you know made the the yeah, there's just there's not a lot left they they do with his character once he has activated Chappy, made him as he he calls himself his Ch Chappy's maker. Of course, he also calls criminals Philistines and barbarians. So so that's fun. He is very much a nerd character, but that does bring me to. I don't really know, I don't even remember the name, the, the rap group, I don't really know them, the movie played some of their music, it seemed cool, might want to, I don't know what it is about the, the, the girl, but she's, yeah, I don't know, there's, there's just something about her, she, yeah, want to, I'd like to hear more of their music, and I'm not saying they're bad actors, but they are really, they're very unlikable characters. The, basically, yeah, we, we spend a lot of time with this trio of criminals and, yeah, very unlikable, very one note. It's not a problem that the movie has so much, you know, spend so much time with criminals. The the first movie has a you know, Blomkamp's first film has a protagonist who is really, you know, a, a coward, a weasel, you know, and yeah, so so it's not that It's, it's not that they're criminals, it's that they are so very unlikable, especially Ninja. He's just... And, and he didn't really have to be that way, because there are times where they let him be more of a human being, but... Yeah. Now... Let's see, but, but yeah, basically... The thing is that this, these three, the, this gang, have to, I think it's like 20 million. They have to earn 20 million in one week, seven days. This, this guy, I think he's called Hippo, who they, who they like did the job for and didn't go so well. And he keeps telling them, seven days, seven days. Dude must just have watched The Ring or something. And yeah, they have to get all this money and thus, you know, they, they are in a hurry. So Ninja is kind of saying, okay, we have to train him really fast. And he's frustrated with the others for, you know, more taking their time with him. And you can understand where he's coming from. And at the same time, same time you feel like, oh, it's too much. No, it's, it's a kid. So just, you know, it just, it could have had a good balance. There. Actually, if anything... They seem really strict. Like you, you see a kid, a robot kid, and suddenly you forget that you're, you know, you have this ridiculous deadline. It's just, you know, it's a ticking clock. Don't forget another Blomkamp trope. Yeah. Now. And yeah, there, there is, you know, pitch black comedy in you know, in there with the drama, another one of his tropes. If, you know, the, the plot and events are fairly unpredictable. It, yeah, and, and, you know, as usual, he keeps to a very fast pace. Now, this one is not really about slums, unlike the other two. 
but it is set in Joburg, so this, yeah. Which I don't think Elysium actually is. Elysium is, yeah. But, yeah. And. I suppose. Now, I suppose. There's a real sense of scope. And as usual, there's clearly a lot of effort and thought put into it by Blomkamp. Now, parts of it, some of the setup is a little bit contrived. I don't really want to give too much away, but just... Let's say the the manner in which the the robot comes into possession of the the trio of criminals excuse me is excuse me contrived and that's and there are several other things that are contrived. Now, as usual for Blown Comp, the effects are not just there to show off. They feel like they're really there. You know, yeah, feel real. Now. <coughs> Excuse me. This, you know, it, it basically is a blockbuster, but it's very atypical for such. Which is by now typical for Blown Comp. Now... And over the course of the film, Chappie goes through almost every major human emotion. It's visually very rich. And there seems to be, as usual, a lot of freedom for the actors, for you know, ad-libbing and such. Now, this one dials down the shaky cam that, you know, in Elysium, the action scenes really suffered from shaky cam and slow-mo, you know, both, yeah, cutting, going from one of those to the other, really. This one has slow-mo, but there's very little shaking of the camera. And it's not jarring when it cuts, you know, when it goes into slow-mo and out of slow-mo. It, yeah, it feels more organic. And it's still very much a hard R. Now. I do think it's interesting that the the scout robots are very very similar in design to the Elysium homeland robots I feel like he more or less reused his design now suppose that Some have said that this feels unfinished. Yeah, I I can see what the, I feel like. This does that thing where the very opening, you know, signals that there's going to be something big coming up. The same way District Nine did, and the the I mean, you know, the the interviewer guy even shows up. You know, old, you know. So Christopher Johnson, but with the ending of the movie, I'm not sure what it feels like the beginning and the ending are from two different movies. Now, the movie is roughly an hour and 56 minutes, not counting the end credits. And I suppose that is 
more or less it. Please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe for more content.